right, so I themed it, uh, An Aramani Journey, An Aramani Way, Spiritual Wellbeing and Leadership. And I'm quite aware of the fact that um, I think John McGraw, he spoke on the, on the body, body health. And then I can't remember the other lady now, I think it's Liesl maybe. That's, uh, she talked about the emotional, uh, emotional well-being. So I, there's a, a big conversation around, is it three, is it one? Um, I think we are integrated uh, as human beings. So it's actually, it's one, one thing, a body, mind, spirit, it's, it's integrated. But for conversation, we split it. So I think then you can focus on each, um, on each dimension. So yeah, some of you have been to an harmony, some of you haven't been to an harmony. So I thought it, it would be good maybe just to share a three, three and a half minute video on the highlights of 2019, just for you to get a sense of an harmony. So I'm not gonna talk a lot about an harmony today, but just for you to get a sense of where, where I'm coming from. Um, enjoy it. Just want to sorry. Just want to see if I. Where is my? Good. Right there. At an harmony, we believe that God needs people where they are at. And therefore, every activity, every moment, every space is filled with intentionality. I was able to grow personally um, in understanding God's purpose for me. This has been a place and a space where I could really be serious, start looking at what's happening with me and my soul. Because it's, it also pushes your boundaries, um, hearing from so many other people. A lot of it was to be on your own, but then it was a lot of teamwork and you had to engage others, and that broadens everything. Here in this experience, we have come to the point that God is out to me. In ons reik nou uit na die gemeenskap wat we ons gaan. The idea is to form a core group of in Christ leaders to move from disharmony to be more in harmony. We are convinced that change can only happen and be sustainable if it is embedded in prayer. Being on this journey has made me realize that I need to make time to pause. The place itself allows you to rest. You are my light. You are I've learned that there's a need to also reflect, uh, the need not to avoid pain, but in solitude, really dig deeper. God wants me to be in harmony to myself, in my marriage, to, towards our community. God wants to bring harmony. Saying goodbye at the end of this journey is going to be bittersweet. We've made some lasting friendships here. I feel like I'm, I'm full of hope, I'm full of vision. Um, I've got renewed strength, renewed energy, and I'm ready to take on the world.
So 2019 is over. But we became even more convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. And therefore, at An Harmony, we will continue in 2020 to help people to move from disharmony to be more in harmony. Good. Thanks for, for watching, for you just to get a sense of what the Narmuni is all about. And uh, yeah, maybe today you can imagine yourself at the Narmuni, sitting in that beautiful garden, and uh, we talk about spirituality. So the topic is we need to breathe. Um, and it's interesting, the whole thing about breath. Um, there was an old uh, prayer that, uh, that the Jews used to, to say for the word Yahweh. So that's a name for, for God in, in, in Hebrew. And they would um, say it as a breath prayer. So they would say, Yahweh, Yahweh. And um, so just that could be a, a prayer for you um, during today and going forward. Just uh, we need to breathe. We need that connects, connection to spirituality, to, to spirit, to something or someone higher than ourselves so that's why i said we need so it doesn't matter uh, what religion you are in there's a deep need anthropological need uh, to breathe or to be connected uh, to something or someone bigger than ourselves so this guilt guilt-free session i love that word guilt-free uh, we'll be focusing on understanding spirit spirituality and leadership then maybe you can discover if you have SDD. And then we can take a few moments to explore the Anarmony leadership way. And that's a way that could help you to, um, to be spiritual, uh, spiritually healthy. And then I would like to introduce to you to a meaningful spiritual practice uh, amid COVID-19. So that would be the focus uh, for the next few minutes but before we start if you had to present uh, this session and if you had to say something about spirit what would you talk about so i'm going to give you a few moments and you're welcome to share that in the chat um, but just if you had to talk about spirit what would you talk about if you had to talk about spirituality what would you talk about and then if you had to talk about leadership Given spiritual well-being or spiritual health as a, as a theme, uh, what would you talk about in terms of leadership? So I'm going to give you a few moments, and I'm going to, yeah, maybe going to look at that chat and just share. Uh, what, what would you focus on? Go for it. I'm going to give you two, three minutes for this. So Brendan, maybe I can ask you to just read aloud what you see in the chat. That could be helpful. Uh, so at the moment, nothing. Okay, one has come through. Um, mm -hmm. Spirituality, the fundamentals that define me for eternity. That's a good one. Good. Okay. Anything else? No, I'll read them as I come through, but uh, nothing, nothing yet. Only just, okay. just the one. I'll give uh, this. relationship to, with God. Relationship with God. Um, Maybe. So far, that's just the two. Just the two, okay. Uh, my identity and source of life. Identity, source of life. Uh, 
You cannot effectively lead if you're not connected to something bigger, the why, the reason. Okay, so um, why you need to be connected to something bigger, otherwise you starting, can't lead. Yeah, starting to pour in. Purpose, being co-workers with God. Purpose, uh, co-workers with God. For me, means God within me, and spirituality means letting him work through me. Okay. Importance of responding to God's calling. Responding to God's calling. Good. All right, uh, so... Another one. Uh, sorry, last one. Uh, my spirit is my advocate helper here on earth. He is my compass while on earth. He dwells within me. I'm his vessel. Okay. Advocate, helper, my vessel. Good. Good. All right. So thank you. Um, yeah, my assumption is that you know something about the spirit and some of you know a lot about spirit, spirituality, leadership. Um, and that's how I also prepared. So you already have some knowledge and some experience of spirit, spirituality, leadership. Um, so hopefully the conversation will stimulate you to think uh, a little bit broader about spirituality, about the spiritual dimension. Um, but, but I must say, I made a distinction between religion and spirit and spirituality. So for me, again today, I will talk to you as a human being having a spiritual dimension, not necessarily someone that goes to church or to, to mosque or to a, um, so, so spirituality and religion, I just want to split it for today's conversation. That's the, um, so, and, and it could be helpful for you. Um, sometimes when you talk about spirituality, um, some people immediately think new age or there's something wrong or it's esoteric or, but for today's conversation, I want to invite you to just be open, maybe for a new understanding or maybe a deeper understanding of spirit, spirituality and leadership. Um, so part of my background is in the church environment, uh, corporate environment, education environment. And um, one of the things that I've learned is that sometimes you need to adapt your language based on your audience. So hopefully this morning you feel comfortable with the language that I'm, that I'm using. So I'm not preaching this morning. I'm sharing about the spiritual dimension. So let's jump in. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to start with a prayer. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we all struggle doing the things that we do not want to and neglecting the things that we have to do. We need you. We live as if you are dead. We desire to travel life's journey with a deep consciousness of you. Please grant us harmony or harmony with you. We build our lives on a false self that is small and self-referenced instead of a spacious real self that is Christ-referenced. We desire to travel life's journey becoming more like Christ. Please grant me harmony with myself. We dehumanize and demonize others. We desire to travel life's journey caring deeply for all your image bearers even our enemies, please grant us harmony with one another. We are destructing humanity and its habitat. We desire to travel life's journey, cultivating compassion that mirrors your love for creation. Please grant us harmony with the world. So let us pray together. I surrender my everyday ordinary life, my sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before you as an offering as we join a choir where not our voices only, but our very lives sing in harmony, in a stunning anthem to the God and Father of our Master Jesus. Amen. So the first time that I became aware of my spiritual dimension was when I experienced extreme tiredness. And I quickly realized after resting on the physical level that I was still tired. And then after a while, I, I realized that I'm also, there's an emotional tiredness. And remember, I'm in a, in a human capital space. I'm working with people like many of you. So after two, three weeks of holiday, physical, I felt better, a little bit emotional. I felt a little bit better. But then I realized there's another dimension, and it's a spiritual dimension. Um, 
and the Afrikaans word to some people use, jy is murg moeg, seals moeg, so it's, it's a different tiredness, your soul is tired, your spirit is tired, and uh, I realized that I need a different type of rest for those different dimensions, uh, so I don't know, maybe it's a spot check for you, um, in terms of your tiredness, given COVID-19, given a hectic year, a uh, turbulent time, where, where do you feel tired? Is it just on a physical level? Is it maybe on an emotional level? And maybe also on a, on a spiritual level? So I think it's helpful to, to just get the distinction between those different dimensions of you and the different types of tiredness. So I'm not going to spend time here, but just that's the first time that I became aware of a, uh, a distinct spiritual dimension because I was tired in that dimension. And I thought at a stage, maybe if I go to church again, if I, if I pray more, I will be, I feel better, but it didn't, it was, it was a different kind of. Everyone good? I hear someone's <laughs> sigh. Good, so then became aware of the spiritual dimension in my tiredness. And then when I prepared for the session, I just type in the word spirit on Google. And what I got is, and you can do, you can do the same. Uh, you see the movie Spirit. Uh, maybe that's a good movie to watch. And then you see the hands with the light in the hands. So it's something esoteric. Uh, I think in the, in the Christian belief, you see the dove after a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Um, then on the left corner, uh, you saw there more an Eastern type of, of uh, picture of spirit. And then you see the, as first time that I've seen this, an, an airline called spirit. Um, so I think that could be a good airline if they're still flying. And then there's uh, NASA as a... Uh, some spaceship type of thingy here that's um they call it spirit um so yeah so just um if you talk spirit there are different pictures of spirit um so it's easy when you talk from a religious point of view to soak a holy spirit in in uh, for me as, as a christ follower but if you say spirit, how do you explain it? I mean, is it, you spend through an airplane, you use a movie to explain it, you, you use a dove. So um, how do you explain it to the people in your community? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and see if we can get a better understanding of spirit in, in the next few minutes. So bear with me. So... The word spirit, the Latin word, spiritus. Now, please don't go and Google spiritus because you'll see uh, liquor or alcohol. That's what you will see. Uh, or the other word that, that they use, inspirare. So, so you say, in Latin, the word for spirit, that which gives life or vitality to a system. So when you are filled with spiritual energy, you feel great inspiration. And I think that's where the light bulb on the left, that for me is a very helpful metaphor to say that we are like light bulbs and it's beautiful and you get different shapes and sizes of light bulbs. Uh, and they, there is a use to light bulbs without light. Uh, I saw people using it as uh, where they put in plants or flowers if you turn it around or you can... We don't have a glass you can use it to, to drink uh, water from if you take out all the stuff. Um, so, but the best use of a light bulb is if you, the, it can spread light. And in order to spread the light, you need some electricity. So for me, that's a helpful metaphor. So we are like light bulbs, but we need that spark. We need that electricity so that we can... Uh, Get, uh, get to our full potential, that we can realize our full potential, um, that we can serve our purpose. So the idea of spirit, electricity, light bulb, maybe that's more helpful than an aeroplane called spirit. So that's the first thing if you talk about spirit. Then spirituality, 
for me would then be the outward expression of the fruit of the spirit or it would be the effect of spirit if you take the light bulb that would be then uh, the spirituality would be the light that i'm spreading would it be a cold light a warm light um what do they use the bulb for is it where i bry i have a bulb or is it in a beautiful room so that's the idea then of spirituality that's an outward expression of the fruit of of the spirit and again you can sit through this whole uh, teaching or session and just try and understand spirit and spirituality but i would like to invite you to to sense with me where where do you see it around you where do you experience it since this morning uh, because it's there um, in my opinion god is everywhere he's he, he's alive and well um, so you pick up clues and cues of of his presence all around you so manifestations of healthy spirituality where you see someone loving another person where you see people caring for one another where you see people supporting one another where you see good heartedness and again it's important so it's not only if you're a christian you see the manifestations of healthy spirituality there are other people that they love they care they support they live in the now they're experiencing gratitude I've seen people that it's not going well around them, but there's gratitude. That's a manifestation of, of uh, spirituality. People that live with appreciation, simplicity, spontaneity, where you see sincerity, gladness, cheerfulness, where people are all inspired by beauty. Where you see a transcending of the self, where there's a service, when people want to serve one another. Sometimes when you walk into a place, there's, there's an experience of peace. When you can surrender to something beautiful and meaningful. Sometimes when you have that gut feeling. Or that, that intuitive experience. I don't know why, but I need to do this, that deep inner voice. When you can have patience, friendliness, being true to something or someone. When you see humility, when you see self-control. Now again, important, you see this even in people, in communities where they not necessarily follow Christ. So those are manifestations of healthy spirituality and you can add to the list but sometimes for me the the best experience of spirituality is when that sense of everything comes together those for me are manifestations of healthy spirituality we don't have time to talk about toxic spirituality and that's it because that's a different conversation you see you get that as well then What is spirituality all about? Now, again, I don't want to give you one definition. I want to play around and stimulate your thinking if you talk spirituality. So spirituality is all about connectedness to one's core. So that idea of I'm connected to, to who I really are, who I really am. Connectedness to the transcendental, to something or someone bigger than myself. When you get a sense of deep meaning, a sense of abiding purpose. We have a clear sense, here are the things that's really important to me. When you live in harmony with one's life dimensions. I hear a lot of people talking about if I can just get balance in my life. Um, you know, I would like to invite you to look for harmony in your life, a harmony between your different life dimensions. When you experience harmony and a deep sense of peace, that's spirituality. Where you live with hope you have positive expectations spirituality is a source of one's religious and moral orientation 
it's a source of experiencing profound beauty. I mean, if you read the book of Viktor Frankl standing in concentration camp, in a line, it could be his day to be executed in the gas chambers, and him looking at a sunset and saying, in that moment, I felt connected to my wife, to someone bigger, but that, that source of experiencing profound beauty, that spirituality. Just to experience love in your heart, that is part of, of spirituality. Then the spirituality or spiritual dimension finds expression through your mental dimension. So people that are spiritually, uh, spiritually connected, they will reason in a different way. You will, ex you will sense a different wisdom, a different kind of commitment, a different sort of humor. You will pick it up. There's something different here. In their emotional dimension, you'll pick up things like love, but it's a different type of love. It's a, almost a selfless love, sympathy, empathy, warmth, caring. In their social dimension, service, patience, fairness, respect. So important, the spiritual dimension, I'll show it later, that's the core dimension in my opinion. And from there, everything else flows. So like that light bulb, if there's electricity, you'll see it in the mental dimension. The light will shine on the mental dimension, through the mental dimension, the, through the emotional dimension, through the social dimension. Uh, so it will influence your whole life if you're connected to the electricity or the source. Then they also talk about spiritual intelligence. And that's also a session for another day. So if you're spiritually intelligent, and, and believe me, there are many, and if I may say so-called um, leaders that are spiritually not intelligent at all. I don't want to use the word spiritually stupid. <laughs> I mean, that's not a good word, but it's not, so not intelligent. Uh, the intelligence or spiritual intelligence is intelligence or ability with which we ac access our deepest sense of meaning, values, purpose, and highest motivation. So SQ spiritual intelligence is what or who am I? It's your core. IQ would be what I think. EQ would be what I feel. Physical intelligence, intelligence will be what, what do I do with my energy? So there's something like spiritual intelligence. And some people say, listen, I go to church every day, or I go to mosque, or I go to, that doesn't equal spiritual intelligence. It just means you are very good uh, in, in terms of belonging to a community. So spiritual intelligence is not a given, so, but you can develop it. You, you can become more in, spiritually intelligent. And I think that's what one of you said in a, in, a, in a chat. That's from a Christian point of view, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in as your helper. Coming alongside you to help you to become spiritually more intelligent. So then they also, they also talk about, I know it's a lot of information, but I just, it's just to stimulate you and to, to just give you a sense of, if you talk spirituality, it is broad, it is big, it is deep. It's not just your understanding of spirit. It's, it's bigger than that. So if, you, if we talk spiritual intelligence, um, what or who, who I am, you'll pick up that sometimes you operate from your psychic self and sometimes from your spiritual self. Or some people talk about the false and the real self um, or your ego and your higher self. So there are many ways describing this, and I don't want to mix terms. If you talk from, from a spiritual point of view, it's different words that you use. But just for this conversation, if you can pick up, am I just conscious now, or am I also self-conscious? So there are many people that's conscious of what's happening around them, but they're not conscious about where they fit in to the bigger picture. The psychic self is a, an experiential aspect, uh, what, what I experience with my body, with my um, 
yeah, just what I experience, what I see. Spiritual self is more, you can sense something. You can, you, you can make meaning of something. Like if you take COVID-19, if you're from a psychic self only, and you're not connected spiritually, you will talk about, you'll moan and groan, just as all the other people mo groan and moan about COVID-19. You'll just, you'll talk about what you see in front of you. If you, from a spiritual self, you, you will have the ability to make sense, to make meaning about what's happening in and around you. Personal, spiritual self. Um, psyche self is more about the tangible, it's body bound. There's a limit. It's about your memory, your learning, thoughts, motivation, personality. Whereas the spiritual self is not tangible. It's, it's about meaning making. It's about sixth sense. It's about your conscience. Where you can evaluate what's happening in and around you based on your values. Um, and then there are also people that, that goes a little bit further and say there are certain emotions that's linked to the psyche and to the spiritual self. And again, if we talk emotional health, you need to experience all emotions. That's good. Um, so please, I, I don't see necessarily negative or positive emotion. An emotion is an emotion. It, it wants to move you to do something. But for this conversation, there were people that, that they measure what's, what are the, the vibrations or the, the energy when you feel rage or anxiety or sadness. There's a low vibration to it. Whereas when you have joy, there's a higher vibration. There's, so there's a different type of energy, different type of vibe that you, um, that you express. It's a different type of light that you bring to the world or influence that you bring to the world. Um, good. So what's the personal value of, of being spiritual? And I'm almost uh, going to give you a moment now to, to ask a question or two. So, so what is the, the personal value of being spiritual? Now, now many people, if you, from a Christian point of view, I grew up when they tell you, listen, it's the, the values, you will go to heaven one day. Great. And what about my life now? So the personal value of being spiritual or at least spiritually connected is that you, you will have a way, you'll find a way to deal with existential problems. Sorry, I, I, there you go. And, and just think about now during COVID-19, think about your community, think about your challenges in your organization. If you're spiritually connected, you, you have a, a way of dealing with existential problems, problems where we feel stuck or trapped, such as grief. Because if you're spiritually connected, there's a deep sense of what life's struggles are about. It will give you the compass at the edge. And the edge is the border between knowing what we are about and being totally lost. It will almost give you an anchor point or a compass says oh, we're on our way to somewhere. If you, the, the value of, of being spiritual is that you will find a source for meaning and value. If you have a conscience and the Hebrew word for conscience is the same root as compass, hidden truth of the soul. And just a side remark, that's one of my biggest, biggest concerns about taking a religion out of schools. Um, because we will grow a generation without a conscience, with no compass, so they will be lost. It will help you to get in touch with religion without narrowness, exclusives, bigotry, or prejudice, but, but a freedom type of religion. Where you at least be open to listen to other people even if they differ from you. Another thing about being spiritual is it will help you to integrate the intrapersonal and the interpersonal. So you will outgrow your, your immediate ego self. So, so your small self will become bigger. You'll be able to go beyond um, what you want. And, and interesting, uh, they said about Maslow, so his highest, if you look at his, his uh, needs, hierarchy, uh, the highest one is, is self-actualization. But they said on his deathbed or towards the end of his life, he said, no, 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 it's not the highest in my hierarchy or my uh, pyramid is not self-actualization. It is self-transcendence. So if you can go beyond yourself, and that's where the 
being spiritual will help you because you know there's something bigger or someone bigger. And then the last two, if you, the value of being spiritual is that you will develop towards the person you have the potential to be. You will develop into, call it now, a bigger person. You'll be able to break old paradigms, to, to invent new ones. You will be able to wrestle with problems of good and evil, life and death. So to come into full possession of our spiritual intelligence and leadership, we have at the same time known the possibility of despair, pain, deep suffering and loss, and have made our peace with these. And that's what many people say. If you're, if you're spiritually connected, you will be able to sit with pain, with loss, with despair. Um, and I must say, I see it now around me, the things that I'm reading, many things that we see, especially in, in some of the American churches is more positive psychology than going on a spiritual journey. It's more about positive thinking than going on a spiritual journey. Uh, and that's why it's very difficult to sit with pain, to sit with despair. So when you, the value of being spiritual is that you will be able to sit with, with things that are not that, that great. Um, and then what's a corporate value of being spiritual? And I think that's, if you talk leadership, you need to talk about corporate or think about your organization. Um, and, and again, many people that talk spirituality and leader, uh, leadership of spirituality and organization, they think it, it's, it's about, and again, it's part of it, but they think it, it's only about opening with prayer and ending the day with prayer. Or, uh, be nice people at work or, and that's all great. Please continue with it. But if you, in, if you talk about spirituality and, and, and organization, I think you need to see it in, in performance reviews. What type of things are you reviewing in terms of performance and in terms of your HR process, in terms of what do you reward in, in your organization? But that's maybe for another day. But what you'll see, um, if your organization is spiritually connected or the leaders in your organization is spiritually connected, uh, placing goals and strategies in a wider context of meaning and value. So typically what you will see is, if I can, can simplify it, you will be less about being the best in the world or the best in your industry, but you will be more about how can I be the best for the world and the best for my industry, of my community you will be known as a, as a self-aware company. You will know what you believe in. There are many companies that says, listen, we are Christian companies, but only place where you see the values is in, on, on the wall. People, if you ask them now, what do you believe? What do we believe? And they, they won't be able to tell you. But with companies that are spiritually connected, um, it, will be, it will be clear to them what they believe in. It will, it will be vision and values led. The, the core vision is visible and inspires everything that is done. It will be like that light bulb. Um, it will reinforce a sense of excellence and pride in service. Friends, I've, uh, I've been working with many NPCs or in NGOs and churches for, for, for that matter. And I must tell you that sometimes I see in, in that world is there's no pride in service or there's not a lot of pride in service. Not, not a lot of excellence always. And I see that in corporate as well, but just the fact that you're a church or that you're an, a Christian NGO doesn't make you spiritually connected. But people will pick up when they're with you and you're spiritually connected as a leadership group and as a leader, um, there's a different type of, uh, and the excellence is different for me than perfection. It's, it's, it's a pride. I, I want to do my best. I want to be the best for. Um, you'll see with these companies, they are compassionate. They celebrate diversity. They dare to be different. And they seek a pos positive response to adversity. There are many Christian organizations that go into communities and create a us them experience. 
if you do that as an organization, you're not spiritually connected and, and it's not spiritually healthy for your organization and for your community. And then a beautiful thing that I, what I see with, um, with uh, organizations that are spiritually connected, there's a deep sense of humility and a deep sense of vocation. So I think there's great corporate value in being spiritual. So spiritual well-being or spiritual health is a condition in which harmony, connectedness with self, meaning in life, inner fulfillment are experienced. Spiritual leaders are directed toward their true north. They live authentically and in line with direction giving value. So if you want something for spiritual well-being or a definition, that would be uh, I would I would state it. Good. Um, I just want to open here quickly, stop sharing. Just want to put here on a, just quickly thumbs up if you're okay. Um, I just want to get a sense, are we still engaged? Um, good, good, good. Donkey, donkey, donkey. <laughs> uh, good. All right. Still some people there. Wonderful. All right. So let me, let me, let us continue. Um, I'm going to, Give it time for, for questions just now. So we're trying to understand spirit, spirituality and, and, and leadership or corporate leadership. And then maybe give some time just to discover if you have SDD. So when I, I sent this through to uh, Velke, they said, but what is SDD? It sounds like a, an illness or something. Yeah, it is an Ill, illness. And it's a spiritual deficit disorder. So that's a phenomenology of an unfulfilled spiritual dimension. So big word, but it's actually that's the lived experience of someone who's not spiritually connected. So spiritual standardness happens when a person is cut off from, from or experience an imbalance of his or her deepest self. And that's characterized by disconnectedness, alienation, and sometimes meaninglessness. So that's why some people experience, listen, I work, I'm in a Christian organization, but I feel disconnected. I feel alienated. I feel it's meaningless. That is a spiritual problem. Then a spiritual problem. And then sometimes people go, if you're a leader and you're not aware of the spiritual dimension, you think it's a job description challenge. You think it's a, a, a vision and a mission challenge. But sometimes it's just that that leader and your organization is not spiritually connected. So just a quick, I'm not going to focus on, on, on um, each line, but if you have SDD, spiritual deficit disorder, you will see in yourself, but also in your organization, a lot of fear. And then it's actually, so sometimes fear is, is healthy, but there's a, an overly, over, um, over the top fear. Uh, everything is fearful. Uh, you're always reactive. You're always in a crisis mode. It's really protective. You're avoiding many things, many conversations. Uh, you all about willful. No, no, we must try harder. We must work harder. We must uh, extremely worried, doubtful the whole time, and sometimes even paranoid. And again, if you here and there, if you're worried, that's good. I mean, that's human. But if that becomes a trademark of you and your organization, it means that you have SDD. It's a scarcity mentality. You stress and depressed the whole time, depressed the whole time, or eighty percent of the time. And again, if I say depressed, I don't talk about depression. I just depressed is when you walk into your organization, you get a sense of, but it's it's not a great vibe here. You get that sense of uh, we separate the whole time. There are many people in this team or organization, but we're far away from one another. Or maybe you're good at, at work, but at home, you, you're separate. You feel disconnected. You feel attached. And what I, when I talk about attached, 
it's as if you get uh, almost obsessive about your organization and your thing and your reputation. And so it's a, it's a cleansing uh, fist. You're attached. And for many of you, you, you picked it up, you'll know that uh, during COVID-19, some of you, maybe it's a part of your organization had to close. If that brings you to a place where you feel, listen, I need, I'm nobody without this organization, you become, become too attached to the organization. If you, if you think the whole time it should be this way, if there's no, if you're reluctant to change, this SDD. If you're in a blaming, punishing game the whole time, uh, it's always about other people, other organizations, government, uh, this SDD in your organization. Uh, if you're only in the future or in the past, you can't be in the now, then this SDD. Um, so yeah, so I don't uh, want to focus on the anatomy capacity now, but the anatomy capacity, what we're talking about is if, if you can develop an anatomy capacity and we prayed it in the beginning, I think you will overcome the SDD um, because then you will, as a leader, you'll bring love um, into your organization. It will be a different type of leading organization. People will experience different things in your organization. So I'm not going to, get to go through this now. But yeah, the idea is not to remember it's a guilt-free session, but uh, how are you going with you and your organization? Do you have SDD, spiritual deficit disorder? Good, are there any questions now? So let's give, just give it a two, three minutes for for any questions before I jump in and, and just uh, share something about the anatomy, the anatomy way. Brendan, maybe you can help. Uh, no questions just yet. Okay. Anyone that want to give me a verbal question? Or even if you're getting cross at me now, that's also great. Share that. So listen, I think you talk nonsense. Uh, that's, uh, that's always helpful. Nobody? No, nothing just yet, Johan. Okay. Maybe it's because I explained it very well. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Shall we continue? Yes, let's carry on. Good. Wonderful. So um, maybe I should quickly just go back to the... Maybe I should... No, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> So exploring, so we had the understanding spirit, spirituality, and leadership. And then we had a quick discover if you have SDD, spirit deficit disorder. And now the invitation is to explore the anatomy leadership way. Now, the, I think the premise is that if you follow the anatomy leadership way, that will help you to be, to experience spiritual well-being as a leader, but also as an organization. So that's the, um, that's my starting point. That's my of attractment or my assumption is that if you follow the anatomy leadership way, it could help you to become spiritually healthy as a leader. And then also as an, as an organization. So just quickly, this, this will be one, uh, one second, maybe a little bit more. So the anatomy journey, we, we base it on Romans eight. We take people into five movements. We take you into your context, into your disharmony, the harmony that you want or the, the better life that you want. And then what is the change that you can bring about? Um, because you're not a victim. You can bring about some change or at least influence someone. Or maybe you need to accept some things in, in your organization or in your life or in your community. And then movement number five is that we invite people to engage in practices of rest restoration or reconciliation so that's the um, the simple anatomy journey but for the leadership way we've developed something new and uh, i'm just going to focus on a part of it so just quickly what we say here on the left you see the tree so that is our spiritual connection if you like so in the romans 8 it talks about being in christ so that's where, what I say, that's your spiritual dimension. So if you look here in the middle, that's your spiritual leadership. 
your relationship with God. Um, and if you're not a Christian, there's, there's at least a spiritual dimension. So you, you connect it to something. Um, and what is that? Maybe it's, it's a set of beliefs. Maybe it's a, it's a slogan that you grew up with. But there's a connection to something or, or someone higher. And then they, you get the trunk, and the trunk is your, uh, the process of, in, in, in the Christian world of becoming more and more like Christ. And Paul is talking about you can live in either the spirit or in the flesh. And, and interesting, if you're in the spirit, the fruit is life and peace and vitality and energy. So it will be a different light shining. But if you're in the flesh, Paul is talking about there will be death. So with no vitality, no energy, there will be a different vibe. And then I remember the STD conversation. Um, so, and, and then if you look at the, the branches and the trees, uh, the branches and, and the fruit, that will be your ethical thinking and behavior. So that's what people will see in your life. So I think it's important to, to realize that there are great people that, that's not necessarily following Christ. It's important. Um, but if you're in Christ, the, the assumption is that you, people will experience, if both people love the community, if you're in Christ, it should be a different type of love than someone that's not in Christ. Because there are people that's not following Christ at all that loves their community. But there should be a different type of love. Why? Because we are connected to the source of love and grace and peace and kindness. So then if you move to the middle, um, spiritual leadership, and then as you move to the trunk, we talk about personal leadership, relationship with the self, and then interpersonal leadership is relationship with others. So as soon as you start engaging with other people, your team, they will pick up. But Johan, there's a different way that is working with me in our organization. And my... Uh, I'm convinced that they should pick up the, but there's something about Christ in your life or the spirit in your life or the Holy Spirit in your life. And then you go to professional leadership, the top. And, and, and that is where, you, um, where you'll see that someone that's in Christ will work as if for the Lord. So you'll, you'll pick that up. It is a different way of working. It's a different way of engaging at work and in the industry. I hope that may make sense. So, so that's the, this will get us into the, the last picture. And, and then what we see is in the world, and think about your community. So you have a certain context, and currently the context we're living in, COVID-19. And then the disharmony that we see movement too, in my opinion, there's a lot of hopelessness in the world. There's a lot of disharmony, and you can have words for your own disharmony. But then we all dream of three, a harmony, a better world, a world of hope, a world where, uh, and I think Paul is talking about the current sufferings, nothing compared to the glory that's coming. One day, ultimate glory that's coming. So we all want that, that type of hope. Um, and then in the middle, Paul is saying they can live in either the flesh or in the spirit. But how do you, I mean, how do you make it practical? It's easy to say, I, um, I have a spiritual life, but what do you mean by it? Or I'm in Christ, what do you mean by it? So I, what we've developed is a, a house model where we say the foundation, you'll see that there at the bottom, the foundation is the spiritual dimension. And the idea is that if you're spiritually connected and if you align it with the tree, if you're in Christ, that should influence your physical dimension. So that, that for instance, if you take your physical dimension from a spiritual point of view, then my spirit is more than just strength, anaerobic, aerobic, how fit I am. It's also about I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. So he's living in me. Can you see it's a different view on your physical, on your emotional, on your mental, um, financial, vocational, social. So, so, so your, your spiritual, and we don't have time to go into this, but the, if you're spiritually connected, then... It should influence all your other life dimensions. And then, from an Armenian point of view, our leadership way, what we see is that if your spiritual leadership, there will be a conscience. You see it there on the right impact going towards hope. Um, you will have a conscience. Or another root word that's aligning with conscience, consciousness. 
So, and I think that's what Jesus alluded to. The kingdom of God is near. But you're not conscious of it. You don't see it. You're not aware of it. So if you're a spiritual leader, if you're spiritual healthy, you'll read between lines. You'll see something different. When others just see COVID-19, you also see the kingdom of God coming. If you're not a Christian, you at least see that there are people here. And I love people. I want to serve people. There's a conscience. It's not just about me. There's something bigger, something higher. Then the personal leadership, if you're spiritually connected, you'll see character. And what we said in harmony, character is all about the fruit of the spirit. People will pick up that they are this kindness, uh, self-control, uh, friendliness, patience. It will be different. And it's not, I'm friendly with you to receive something. I'm friendly because I can't help it. The electricity in me radiates friendliness. That's part of my DNA. And that's a, the beauty is, if you, if you read Galatians 5.22, that um, we have the fruit of the Spirit. Now just live it. And again, if you're not a, a Christ follower, um, you can still be kind. You can still be friendly. But I think it will taste different than when you're in Christ. Then on an interpersonal leadership level, um, care. You will care about the people around you. There will be a genuine in Afrikaans, and so a, a ware omgewe is for me so meer. And people will pick up, you don't have an agenda with them. You just care for them. It's real. And then lastly, in your professional leadership, you will develop compassion. There will be a deep, deep, deep compassion for you about the world. Um, so if you're a lawyer, you will look at the world with deep compassion. And, and like Jesus, what, what he said is, so he's, he's in the test times, he, he turned around. I mean, he looked at Jerusalem. He looked at the world and see, but compassion. He started crying. How do you look at your industry? How do you look at your community? There are many so-called Christian leaders that say, listen, actually, I couldn't care about my community. Actually, I don't love the people that I'm working with. I, and then they think they should go to another community. No, that's not the problem. The problem is that may, most probably you're not spiritually connected. Or maybe you're just tired. But people should feel your compassion if you look at your organization, uh, at your community. And then we believe that you will then be a bearer of hope. So when you go into a community then and you have a conscience, people will say, listen, here's someone that I can trust. Because for him or her, it's, it's more than just himself. So they have a little geweerte. Then in terms of personal, if you walk into, into a room as, a, as an, a spiritual leader, you will have a different character. People will pick up that he really cares about us. And people will also pick up for him or her. It's not just about the money. Money is very important to make this thing happen. But it's also about the compassion. They really, really care about uh, the community or about their society. So that's the Anatomy way. We don't have time now. We talked about the Anatomy way or we called it the Anatomy way uh, because we are closely related to what Christ has been doing. Um, and he is the way. So we, in our leadership ideas, as we follow him, our leadership will grow. But if you're not in Christ, you can be compassionate. If you're not in Christ, you can care for people. But it will be a different type of care, in my opinion. It will be a different type of compassion. It will be a different type of character. But God can use that as well. So it's not... Um, yeah. So I hope this was, was helpful. Um, so and there are many way of, and there are many way of leadership, spiritual leadership, conscience, personal leadership, character, interpersonal leadership, care, and then professional leadership, compassion. Good. So...
Understanding spirit, spirituality, and leadership. Discover if you have SDD. Exploring the anatomy leadership way. And then, yeah, maybe just stop for a moment. Are there any questions now before we move to the introduction to meaningful spiritual practice? Brandon, maybe you can help. So uh, no, no questions coming up, Johan. Um, I think so far it's been, it's been really good. I'm excited to hear about some practical things that you might suggest that we can do to, to reduce our S SD and, um, uh, sorry, SDD um, and, um, and how we can incorporate it in our, ourselves and in our uh, corpor corporations and our organizations. So I think, starting with ourselves and then working into our organizations as leadership. There's somebody, um, question, um, how can we learn about the in harmony way in more depth? Good. That's, I think that's a brilliant question. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what we can do is, uh, Brandon, we can maybe send something to, to everyone that attended the session and then there will be more info in, in, in that email. If that's good, we can yeah. just, forward it to you and you can send it to them if, if that's good. Yeah. So what usually happens after the sessions, um, the speakers, if they allow us to send the stuff through, we send it through to everyone. Um, yeah. So we'll do that. Wonderful. Brilliant question. <laughs> All right. Good. So let's take maybe another eight minutes and then I'm going to hand over to you, to you, Brandon. Um, so I, so I put it here, introduction to a meaningful spiritual practice amid COVID-19. So I would like to, to just read a poem, but I picked up, uh, I think, two, three weeks ago. Uh, and it's all about what happened to us during COVID-19. And you'll see it's a lot of spiritual things happening, happened to us. So we've all been exposed, not necessarily to the virus, maybe. Who even knows? We've all been exposed by the virus. Corona is exposing us, exposing our weak sides exposing our dark sides, exposing what normally lays far beneath the surface of our souls, hidden by the invisible masks we wear, now exposed by the paper mask we can't hide far enough behind. Corona is exposing our addiction to comfort, our obsession, remember the attached in the SDD, our obsession with control, our compulsion to hoard, our protection to self, of self. Corona is peeling back our layers, tearing down our walls, revealing our illusions, leveling our best laid plans. Corona is exposing, exposing the gods we worship, our health, our hurry, our sense of security, our favorite lies, our secret lusts, our misplaced trust. Corona is calling everything into question. What is a church without a building? What is my work without income? How do we plan without certainty? How do we love despite risk? Corona is exposing me, my mindless numbing, my endless scrolling, my careless words, my fragile nerves. We've all been exposed. Our junk laid bare, our fears made known, the band-aid torn, the masquerade done. So what now? What's left? Clean hands, clear eyes, tender hearts. What Corona reveals? God can heal. Come, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. I think it's a beautiful poem to say something about Corona and how it exposed us. So I'll send this afterwards. Uh, I'm just gonna take you through it quickly. But we talk about the anatomy compliant. Oh God of my life, I'm love sick for you in this weary wilderness. I thirst with the deepest longings to, to love you more, with cravings in my heart that can't be described. Such yearning grips my soul for you, my God. So here's the practice. Acknowledge an awareness of our Father within your context. So maybe for some of us, we feel extremely alone in our context, in your organization, in your community. So acknowledge that the Father is there with you. Then what you can do at the end of the day, you can contemplate, and you can do it more than once during the day, contemplate the day in a posture of gratitude. So what can I be grateful for? 
and this is the, it may sound very simple but I, I know many leaders that oh, they moan more than the people it's just all the negative stuff but how can you contemplate your day in a posture of gratitude but what can i be grateful for And maybe you don't, you're, grateful, you're not grateful for anything. Maybe you can just say a prayer or just sit and breathe. Recognize moments of disharmony and moments of harmony. So look back in your day, look back in your morning. Are there any moments of harmony, any moments of disharmony? And then choose a moment of disharmony or harmony and talk to God about it. Or if you're not a Christ believer or a Christ follower, maybe just write it down. And then discern with the Holy Spirit how these moments could help you to become more like Christ tomorrow. And again, if you're not in Christ, maybe just sit and think, how can these moments, how, how will these moments shape you going forward? Because sometimes we go through for our days without any awareness, without any openness to what's happening around and in us. So soulful moments of harmony is an experience of connection. So when you look back on your day, where did you feel connected? It fills you with hope, causing you to feel content, joyful, and close to God, yourself, others in the world. So maybe if you look at this morning, for me, a moment of harmony was when, I, when I've read the litany of harmony. For me, that was just a, a special moment of, I felt connected. Remember, the SDD, Disconnection, alienation, meaninglessness. That's SDD. So you look at the other side. So, so where during the day do I, where did I feel connected? And then soulful moments of disharmony is an experience of disconnection. It drains your energy and causes you to feel hopeless, which in return makes you feel far away from God, yourself, others, and the world. This is very important because in a crisis like COVID-19, if you're not aware of, of this, if you don't have such a practice, your people will become your problem. Because you don't have energy for them and they will start irritating and frustrating you more and more and more. So if you can create a moment where you just reflect, where, is, where are moments of harmony or connection and where were moments of disconnection or disharmony? And in the beautiful Romans 8, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through word, wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So I think sometimes if you have SDD, you don't know how and what to pray. And then the Spirit comes and, and it helps you even with the reconnection. Um, so, yeah, so this is a simple, simple, simple uh, practice. I uh, introduce you to it and uh, yeah, maybe take some time and maybe for the next 14 days or seven days, once, twice a day, just sit with it and, and, and see um, what, what happens to you.